So I'm here with Dennis O'Neill today. Could you let us know what the name of your company is and where you're based? Sure. Uh, my name is Dennis O'Neill. I'm the Chief Investment Officer for Digimax.Global, which is a publicly traded investment bank out of Toronto. Uh, the, ticker, uh, the ticker symbol is DIGI on the Canadian Stock Exchange, and we raise money uh, globally for security token offerings. Great. So now if you could tell me something about your background and your involvement in, the, in your firm. Sure. Uh, my background is 25 years of investment banking. Uh, I started two of the largest regional investment banks in Chicago, and I ran the SoftBank E2 Capital office in Chicago. I've raised over uh, $2 billion in early stage capital. I've taken over 70 companies public, spoken at uh, dozens of private equity venture capital conferences, and now I'm considered to be a thought leader uh, in uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain. I've spoken at over 25 conferences around the world, and um, now I'm here with you. <laughs> um, if you could let us know, what kind of subject matter um, companies do you invest in? Like, is it blockchain or AI? And um, at what stage do you um, invest? Companies do you invest in? Sort of early stage or, or later? Yeah, sure. Uh, there's a couple different things that we look for. Is that we're pretty agnostic as far as industry. Uh, what we look for is super high quality management teams. Uh, a real case for blockchain. Uh, companies that have actually deployed their technology are getting traction. We don't do startups, we don't do seed rounds, we don't do early rounds. We, we're looking for later round type, types of transactions that institutions would be interested in. And then uh, we're looking for fair va uh, valuations because the institutional investors, uh, they're very, very sharp and uh, they like to get, uh, they don't like to buy a lot of unicorns, they like to buy companies that are fairly valued in the marketplace. And um, earlier you were talking to me about STOs. Can you tell our viewers what those are um, and sort of what your interest in them is yes. as well? Sure. I mean, I think that we need to talk about the evolution of the STO, which are security token offerings. We started with ICOs, initial coin offerings that did not were pretty much non-regulated. They didn't have any transparency. They didn't have any accountability. There was no shareholder rights, very little due diligence, and it and it really turned into a, a debacle. So now we've evolved into security token offerings, which basically are regulated securities, which you need to be registered in each market. Uh, they're completely transparent, they 100% accountability, you get shareholder rights, and it has all the attributes of a traditional uh, venture capital private equity investment, uh, but instead of trading on an exchange, it trades on an STO exchange. And one of the big advantages of that is that you have to understand is that with, when you're a public company in any market, typically what happens is that uh, if, you're, if you're going to buy a stock, first you call the broker, the broker takes the order, it goes through the brokerage firm, then it goes through a market maker, and then it goes through a clearinghouse, and then it goes through, in, in the United States, DTC, and then it goes through a transfer agent, and then your transaction settles three days later. And with a security token offering, your transaction happens immediately. None of those middlemen are involved. So you take a lot of the, you, you get rid of all the bloated middlemen. And w where the criminals lie are in those middlemen. That's, uh, those are the people that are notoriously create mo most of the criminal activity. So it's a, it's a better, smarter, safer, cheaper, 100% transparent way of doing business which, uh, with a... Uh, mutable digital record so nobody can go back and cook the books. So it's just a better way to do business. Um, and um, today there's been a lot of talk about due diligence when it comes to um, blockchain in, in Malta. Um, how do you think STOs can sort of be a part of this? Sure. Well, uh, anytime you're doing an STO, you're involving uh, uh, registering with the regulatory body, which means that you have an attorney or a law firm, which is ultimately responsible for the material that you write and get approved and get through. So um, obviously uh, the, the private placement or whatever documentation that is required within each region, it's important uh, uh, that, that, you know, obviously if you have a, a law firm, I mean, if, if it's a sizable law firm, especially signing off on it, I think that you're pretty safe that the information is accurate. I will say this, uh, the STL market is at the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. Uh, we've only had 100 transactions globally done. 60 of them have been done in the United States through Reg D offerings. And uh, there's, 
there's there's a bunch of new STL exchanges that have uh, that have uh, launched. Uh, the problem is is that there's very few STOs actually on those exchanges, and the volume is still very light. But I believe that we're at the beginning of the hockey stick, that, that, that these markets are going to grow exponentially, very quickly, very fast, and it's going to be driven by institutional investors that have transparency, uh, accountability, shareholder rights, full due diligence, all the things that you would expect. And in fact, right now, we had the markets gone from 90% retail to 10% institu- to 10% of institutions. Historically, now it's 90% institutions, 10% retail, uh, driving all the trading and driving all the investment. So the market's uh, it's evolving quickly. Um, and lastly, how are you enjoying the summit so far? Um, have you seen anything that you've been keenly interested in? I love this conference. I mean, this is uh, one of the best attended conferences in the world. Uh, Malta is one of the meccas for... Uh, for uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, it's a very, very friendly market. It's one of the few uh, uh, locations or countries you can go to where the prime minister speaks and then some of the top officials speak, promoting uh, bringing your business to uh, Malta. Uh, they, have, they were the first to actually pass laws and regulations that guided uh, the cryptocurrency community. So they have truly been the leaders. And here, you're getting the best companies, you're getting the best funding sources, the best networking, uh, the best educational uh, uh, presentations. So uh, all in all, I I think it's just an absolutely exceptional conference, and I'm happy to be a part of it, and I'm speaking tomorrow. (laughs) That's great to hear. Good luck for your speech, and thank you for your time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.